Hey guys, it's Jess from Stark Skincare here. How's it going? Um, by the time that you watch this, I will actually be in Jamaica. Woohoo! I need a vacation so badly. I'm really looking forward to it. So, we're going to do a quick video today because I have lots to do. There's uh, not just because of my trip, but there's just so much going on right now um, behind the scenes with Stark. Um, Lots of moving and shaking, let's just put it that way. So, we're going to do five tips on how to get the most out of your green beauty products. And um, I sort of just jotted these down very quickly, so do leave comments in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what your favorite tips are, um, because I know a lot of you have been using green beauty just as long as I have, and I follow a lot of you on Instagram, and I know that you guys are collectors, you are curators, you are connoisseurs. So, um, yeah, do do contribute to this conversation, please. But these are my five tips. So, um, most of them, real honestly, they all fun fall under the less is more umbrella <laughs> because I really feel like that is such an important part of green beauty and using green beauty is that you honestly don't need much and that can be one of the more confusing things especially whenever um, someone is trying out a green beauty product especially like an oil or a balm for the first time um, because it's you know they're just like overwhelmed by how greasy <laughs> they get but it's also one of the best things with green beauty because once you hit that sweet spot and you know how much product you should be using, um, it's so effective and you realize just how far your products can go, which is so it's really awesome. So tip number one is after using a balm or more specifically, oh great, my cat's meowing, a facial oil, is your skin shouldn't actually feel oily afterwards. If you put on a facial oil and your face is just an oil slick area and it's like greasy greasy, either you're not using the right oil for your skin type or you've over applied the oil. So your skin should feel um, you know, very comfortable afterwards, it should feel moisturized, it should feel a little bit lubricated. Uh, meaning if you were to like drag, you know, your fingers across your cheek, you wouldn't be like going like that. I promise you I'll never do that on video again. Um, but it should, you know, like you, you wouldn't be like dragging your, 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 your finger against your skin. Um, there would be, you know, some, some slip to it, but not like, you shouldn't be able to like be squeezed and then just like shoot out of someone's arms. Like, I don't know what. So my rule of thumb is you generally want two or three drops of oil for your entire face, especially for daytime use. Nighttime, you can go a little overboard, that's fine. But during the day, especially if you're gonna be applying your makeup over that, you can't have an extremely oily base um, because your makeup's just gonna slide off. So my favorite daytime oil is um, Stark's uh, City Oil. It's um, very very light it's made for people with oilier skin so oily acne prone prone to like more normal skin types can use it very very comfortably but you should only be using two or three drops which is why i put it in those little dropper bottles and not the squeezy bottles because i really felt like people were over applying oils and that just generally people do over apply oils and um more is not more when it comes to oil so Scaling back on that, you will find that you're getting very, very good results with less product. And, um, you know, little your little bo bottles of oil are just going to last absolutely forever. <laughs> so it's good. It's good. Um, but yeah, your skin should not feel oily after applying oil. And especially not, you know, 10, 15 minutes after applying oil. Yeah, maybe for like a few minutes, it will feel a little bit oilier. But you should be able to go ahead and apply makeup 10 minutes later, max, and it's not gonna interfere. Uh, same goes with hair oils. You need a lot less than you think, um, especially if you have finer hair. So start with one drop. Seriously, one drop, two drops. You're going to, um, 
sort of rub it in between your hands so that it's well distributed over your palms and then comb it through your hair. You're not going to, you know, create a giant puddle in your palm and then just slap it on because it will be, you know, too concentrated for your hair. Unless you're actually doing like a pre-shampoo treatment, in which case you can kind of go bananas with hair oils and um, because you will be shampooing it out. However much you're using hair oil now, if you feel like it's just too heavy for your hair, cut back. Do half of what you're doing and see how your hair reacts to it because um, I can guarantee that you're probably using too much if you're not quite getting the right results for your hair or you may just be using the wrong type of hair oil for your hair type. Um, this was often the case with me is that I would use a hair oil, it would be for dry hair, coarse hair, that kind of thing, but it would always be too heavy for my hair. So that's why I formulated Tendril, which is made for finer hair, um, finer medium hair textures, and uh, it doesn't weigh down your hair. So you still get the benefits of using a hair oil without all of the weight, but that still doesn't mean you can apply 20 drops unless you're doing it as like a mask or a pre-shampoo treatment. You still just wanna be doing one or two, three drops, depending on the length and thickness of your hair. So again, less is more, cut way back. Um, and it's the same as well with dry shampoo. You don't need a teaspoon um, to go into your hair. So start with less, work it really, really well through your hair. Um, you know, really scrunch it into your roots, scrunch it into your bangs. Um, put a teeny tiny little bit, if you, if you do wear bangs and you got a big forehead, a big greasy forehead like mine, <laughs> you put a little bit on your forehead. A cat just appeared from under my couch. I mean, it's my cat, not a random cat, but it, I didn't even know she was there. <laughs> that was really weird. Um, so yeah, so you can do like a light dusting on your forehead and then um, that's going to help uh, just absorb any extra grease that, oh, I hate saying grease, oil, that's on your forehead and then your bangs will stay cleaner for longer, especially in the summer. Um, so yeah, so at most natural dry shampoos like mine, Sahara, you can put it on your skin and it's also safe. I wouldn't necessarily do like the Batiste or like the aerosol ones, I wouldn't spray that on my skin but I can't speak for, I'm only speaking for green beauty here right now. So, again, less is more. Um, and then my third, my third tip in the less is more category is um, if you're using a balm cleanser and you can't rinse it off properly or as well as you would like to be able to rinse it off, chances are is that you've applied too much. Um, so it really only takes two pea-sized amounts um, melted a little bit in your fingers and massaged in your skin to do a first cleanse. Maybe an extra pea or two if you've got a lot of uh, mascara on because mascara does take, you know, just a little bit more processing to, to get off. Um, but if you're finding that you're just really slathering it on and it's not rinsing as clean as you would like to, use less and use a face cloth. And I do suggest going for the softest face cloth that you can find, so baby ones are great. Um, bamboo, uh, uh, what's it called? Like the bamboo, is it microfiber? That doesn't sound right right now. Hmm. But you guys know what I mean, like the really, really soft, um, I'm going to say like finely milled, <laughs> that's not the right word, but uh, baby face cloths, they're much, much, much less abrasive than like the adult ones. And so um, if you just find that using a face cloth every day is just too abrasive on your skin, which I totally get, I like doing it once in a while, but that really is an exfoliation, like that's a true mechanical exfoliation. So. You do want to watch out for that if you are exfoliating in other ways because you can very easily go overboard that way. So use, um, like I said, baby face cloth or a konjac sponge. I'm st I still have a few konjac sponges left on my website. Um, not sure if I'm going to be if I'm going to keep selling them. They don't seem to be a very popular item anymore. But um, at least I think it's in my U.S. store. I have some left, and they are on sale actually, and they are very very nice and soft and. Um, a nice way of, of removing a balm in a way that you you don't even really get an exfoliation because it's just so so not abrasive. Um, 
But yeah, so my, my balm, Aurora, it does emulsify on the skin, but you're not gonna see like it melting off all milky white. You can get it to get to go milky if you put some in the palm of your hand and then add some warm water and, and mix it up. You will see it emulsify, but you're not really going to um, see the effect happen on your face, most likely. And another way of um, making sure that you are rinsing your balm off properly is by applying it before you go in the shower and then hitting the shower. So the steam and sort of the more constant stream of water will also help um, remove all of your balm. But remember that you're not going for like a squeaky clean after feel. So you're not going to get, you know, it's not going to feel the same as like whenever you're washing with a gel cleanser. Um, so it might not be that there's like this film left on you. It's just that your your barrier, your acid mantle is actually still, is very happy. And there are some lipids still there, but it doesn't mean that your face is dirty. Do you know what I mean? So it's a little bit of an adjusting um, expectations, which is my tip number, what am I at now? Four. Um, so tip number four is adjusting expectations when it comes to green beauty. What I mean by that is not that natural products perform uh, less good. <laughs> They're, they are definitely extremely, extremely high performers. They just perform differently than conventional. So take, for example, sunscreen. If you have a sunscreen that is um, in a 100% natural base, let's say it's, uh, it's a cream or let's say it's in like an oil base or something like that, and then they're using an oil dispersible zinc um, mineral type SPF, component to it, it's going to feel and look very different on your skin than an SPF lotion that's using pure chemical sunscreens. Um, I mean, it, there's a debate which one's better. Um, I have trouble with all sunscreens. Unfortunately, I'm using a mix. I'm using a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm finding now that my sweet spot is actually a mineral-based sunscreens that aren't in a completely green like formulation if you know what I mean so that the cream like the basis of the cream itself might be a bit of a you know like a, a, a hybrid between it being natural and not so that the the feel of it might be much lighter and more breathable on my skin but that the sunscreen um, itself is mineral that seems to be pretty good. I still get a lot of white casting, so I also like mineral mixed with chemical for the sunscreen. <sighs> it's so complicated, but anyways. Managing expectations, meaning that it's going to perform differently than conventional products, um, especially, you know, if you're used to just, you know, drugstore or or if you're used to, you know, very high-end department store, that kind of thing, just like very specific um, types of brands. Like let's say you've only used Clinique, it's going to feel different if you switch to a small indie brand like mine. And I'm not saying that one or the other is better necessarily, it really depends on your values and like what you're going for, but it is going to be a different experience. So um, I think just keeping that in mind is, is good because uh, perhaps like first uh, impressions, um, you know, could be just, it could just be weird. Do you know what I mean? Like it, if you're using, if you use like a Clinique's Take the Day Off Balm, I think that's what their balm cleanser is called, and then you use mine or something similar to, to my own formulation, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Um, mine's completely plant-based. Mine has a certain scent, a certain texture, a certain look, a certain feel. And then, you know, something that's uh, more like the Clinique one, I've never actually used that particular one, but the scent is probably going to be uh, not natural. The um, texture is going to be, uh, you know, m probably a bit more like Vaseline-ish. Um, I'm just saying this on experience from other sort of similar things that I've just tried recently, um, which I'll be talking about in different videos. But yeah, it's really, um, you know, it's like you, it's not just a, a clean, like a clear trade-off one for the other. There's going to be differences. Now, most of us, when we switch to green beauty, 
we are like smitten with it and we stick with it for a very very long time so there's something to be said about that <laughs> tip number what am i at five is storage so the way that you store your green beauty is super super important most green beauty items like let's say we're talking about an oil or a balm can actually stay fresh for a good 12 to 18 months up to 24 months after it's been produced or after you've purchased it which is usually right around the same time um, so just look for those little labels so that little symbol that's on your label with the little open can and then there's a number um, that just means how long after you've opened the product that it stays fresh. I need some coffee. Cat! What's up Louie? The way that you want to keep your products fresh, um, let's say you've got uh, you know three oils on rotation, is you want to make sure that you keep your caps on nice and tight um, you don't want to be leaving things open and just laying out on your vanity or, God forbid, the bathroom counter. <laughs> That's a cesspool of germs right there. Not speaking about your housekeeping, I just mean in general. Just the water, the humidity, the toilet. Um, you want to keep your lids on tight. You don't want to be storing things in or near your shower unless we're talking about a bar of soap or shampoo or body wash or something that was actually formulated to be in your shower, in which case just follow that, um, the directions for that particular product. Um, you don't want to be storing things on a windowsill, you don't want to be storing things near a heater, you don't want to be storing things anywhere where it get, might get very damp um, or that the temperature would change very rapidly, which is a big problem here. The temperatures change constantly, so that's sort of a big dilemma that I get um, with my own things in my own home. Um, and yeah, out of the sun, so anytime that something is is being hit by the sun, even if it is in a UV protectant type packaging, which your green beauty should be, green beauty should be kept in amber or in darker um, bottles, so at least cobalt or myron, those are like the black um, purplish bottles. Um, or, or black or just anything that's that's dark um, is going to keep your products fresher for a lot longer. Anything that's in clear or frosted glass, just be really careful with that stuff to make sure that it stays somewhere dark and dry um, or just use it up quickly. And yeah, anything that's being hit by the sun will be become degraded. So just yeah, make sure that you, you keep things out of the UV rays, including your own skin. And my last tip, which is what, number six, is know the founder of the brand that you are using. Um, so for example, maybe not every brand will have their own YouTube YouTube <laughs> channel where they share information the way I do. It takes up a lot of time, so probably not. But um, follow them on Instagram, um, follow them, you know, sign up for newsletters because you'll get all kinds of tips and tricks and information and, you know, stuff on the down low and, and whatever. Um, and then you will get to know the products better and how to use them better. And you'll also just feel more excitement about, about the products and about what you're using. And... Um, that makes a difference, honestly. Whenever you feel a certain connection to your products and you tend to use them more regularly because of that, you do get better results. So know your founders so that you can understand sort of the intention and the integrity and the stories and the love behind the products and you will get more out of it. So let me know, what's your favorite tip? Um, what do you find different between green beauty and conventional? And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because that's really important. That's tip number one, really. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye.